Welcome to Never a Dull Moment. And today is definitely not going to be a dull moment because we have something very new for me. You know, I'm more of a Japanese knife collector. And today we have an unboxing slash blacksmith review, preview. Um, so today we have an American knife maker has shared with us a knife that he has made. And I am pretty excited. I met this guy, Marcus Williamson, at Blade Show. Now, I was very privileged with the 900 vendors to have some people um, stop and talk to me, especially with us being a new channel. I think that we had like 800 subscribers at the time. Now we're at 2,200 and growing. Um, Marcus had reached out. He's actually in my state of South Carolina, in Pendleton, South Carolina. And he wanted to share a knife with us. So... We are going to do an unboxing and unveil this American knife maker's knife for you. So it came in this pretty cool case. I don't know if that's the standard. I didn't ask um, instead of a box if he does this. I don't know if I'm just special or if it was to get it through shipping. Um, but he did. Let's go ahead and get this uh, business card out here. So we have um, mwsteelworks.com. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and check out the knife. We're going to talk about the different types of steel. So the steel that this knife is made out of, this 8670, okay, and this six-inch knife. So let's go ahead and let's get a pan to this. Okay, we're going to check out that handle first, a little teaser. We don't, we don't have anything in here that's like this. I and mean, we have a lot of custom handles, but this um, Western style handle that's pretty simple with the angled edge, full tang. It's really kind of nice. This uh, snakeskin pattern that's built in, I have no clue what that is made out of, but it is beautiful. And it is sanded flush. I mean, it is just gorgeous. Looks kind of tough. There you go. So we are going to unveil this knife for you. Okay. So we see the logo for MW. Simple and clean. We can see this beautiful spine. All right. And, and there's a little bit of a, a hump. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just a little bit of a hump. It just kind of breaks in a downward angle right there. So let's do this. Let's, let's sit it down and we'll put a business card right next to it. And you can see that if I'm flush, yep. you can see that it breaks right there. And then if I'm flat here, you can see the break up there. It's subtle. It's a nuance. Okay, this is a mono steel knife. It is not cladded, which is some of the what we're used to. Um, so 8670. So let's talk about this particular steel, okay? This particular steel is not something that we're used to on this show. We're used to um, with the Japanese steels. We've got powdered steel. We've got um, blue paper. We've got white paper. We've got super blue. We've got, um, you know, SKD. We've got several of the kind of stainless. We've got VG10. Um, I think we've had, uh, actually, there's an episode you've never seen VG1 where we've had on here. And... So this is a new steel for us. So I had to do a little research. So this is considered a high carbon um, knife. And one of the things that I'll point out about that is the chromium content on this knife is ridiculously low. Okay, so at 0.5%, um, you need to treat this like a carbon steel knife. It is not that corrosion resistant. Um, this is for Marcus. He makes everyday carry knives. He makes outdoor knives. He makes kitchen knives. This is his kitchen knife. And so this is kitchen knife. It's a wet environment. We use carbon steel knives all the time in wet environments. So this is a knife that you would have to treat like other carbon steel knives. But the other materials that made it make up this particular type of steel give it really good edge retention. So if you've got a good edge on it, you should keep it for a while. Um, the Rockwell hardness is typically on lower. Good blacksmiths can get it up to a 61. So 61 is the highest end that you would get it. And for those of us used to sharpening 62 to 64, some of you are even into the powdered steels or much higher. 
This is gonna be a fun knife to sharpen. It should be something at 61 that you're able to take care of. Um, so you should be able to maintain it with the traditional stones that you're already purchasing and the ones that we recommend. I have a couple of objects out here today to test this knife out, but the first thing I wanna point out is the shape. If I had to compare this shape to another kitchen knife, I would compare it to a Santoku. Okay, it's definitely a lot shorter than a chef knife, but it's definitely a lot taller than some other knives. It's not quite as tall as a Nakiri, but it's definitely up there. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of these, um, these other knives by comparison. So if you look down here, you know, we have, this is a 180 millimeter Santoku. That's a little bit on the unusually large size for a Santoku. Um, so when we look at its size in comparison, we come down to the 170 millimeter. This um, Takamura 170 is also considered a little bit on the tall side. But when you get down to the 165 millimeter, I think this is you know, definitely where it lives. And then when you get down to the 150 millimeter Santu, it, Santuku, it dwarfs it a little bit. It's not dwarfs it, it's, it's right there. A little bit, just a teeny bit. So I would definitely say in the Santoku family, this is a little bit on the shorter sides, but it's height. Mm -hmm. We look at the clearance of this. It re, it's got that like chef knife, not quite a Nakiri height. Okay, I would also like to point out that with the handle, the weight of this knife, it's not uncomfortable. The it's all in the it's all on the back end. I mean, if I had to put the balance point, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely heavier in the handle, but it's not uncomfortable and it's amazing. So, with the spine being the thickness that it is, completely continuous, it barely tapers at the last second. Um, and being that it's a mono steel with the grind being completely flat, it goes from the top to the bottom, completely flat grind. We definitely would like to see some food separation. So the first thing we're gonna do before we cut anything is we are going to put it on the best tester. All right, so let's get this bad boy ready. All right, took me a moment to get that ready. All right, so let me kind of get this comfortable. My wife might have to actually come around so I can reach this. Okay, so we'll get this ready. Come on around this way, hon. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> one of the things you have to make sure that you do with the best testers, my wife made a comment. Um, you know, we get different scores on the show. We're going to do it again. We get different scores on the show. And one of the things you want to make sure is you don't press too fast. If you press too fast, you can get a false read. The other thing is if the screw, um, is not like tightened down completely, you could be like letting up on the tension. So we're going to get some really good tension on here. Get it nice and tight. Okay, so we had the 157. Mm -hmm. So 200. Well, take take way, your average. I mean, yeah. so for anybody who doesn't know, the 200 score is definitely 200 or better is what you're looking for. So that means the knife is sent to us uh, at, a, at a great edge. Um, with the hardness is going to be even great to put another edge. I do love that flat grind. I honestly hate to think that if I ever put an edge on it, okay. that it's not, it's not, it's not, it's going to have that like secondary bevel on there. Um, let's move this out of the way. Let's do a little, uh, let's do a little paper porn, I guess we'll call it a little, let's just, let's hear it. We like to hear the cuts. Okay. So. I mean, I was like, I, I didn't know it had gone in the paper. Yeah. So it just enters from air, you know? So let's just, nice. I mean, real, let's go to the tip. This is the, this is the bad side, but we have no problems with the tip. Let's 
So continuous. Let's do our fold over. Because that's my favorite. I like that. <laughs> so no crease. We just got it folded over. So we had no problems. Once we did the first one, we, yep. Yeah. But, it, but I mean, it went right in. So um, let's do a paper towel. What the heck? What the heck? So we had some tear on the paper towel. Let's give it, let's give it a. So not quite paper towel ready. All right. So this next test that I wanted to go over, this is about the food not sticking. Okay. So we've got, this is a sweet potato. So we want to, now I like the thickness of it. So I'm thinking like a Nakiri, you know what I mean? It's got, it's got the thickness. I want to see the food release. It's round and, and I don't, it's not stable. So I'm being careful to make sure I don't get cut on the show. So we definitely, definitely got some food release. I mean, at first we can see that it's, it's got a little bit of the sauciness on there, but we were not having problems. Let me, um, let me make this flat real quick so I can feel a little better about my. And it's a sweet potato. It's not quite as starchy as say a white potato, but it's definitely getting the job done. We've got the onion. So just holding the edge, let's, let's cut through here. Now we were doing some work earlier with a petty knife, just showing how hard it was because it doesn't have the weight. This knife has the weight and we're definitely able to make quick work of this knife. And you can tell it's size in comparison to the onion. Like it's a good size. So whether you're doing a potato, doing this, I actually feel like the weight of it um, would really be good on like the um, the what, the squash or the butternut squash. squash. You know, I don't know about a spaghetti squash. I got a big spaghetti squash over there. I think this would be a, a little bit hard to kind of wedge that in there. All right. So remember that this is an oxidative steel. So we are going to treat it like that. Okay, so Marcus, uh, I see that this knife is priced at $200 on his website, and they are all sold out. I don't know how fast it makes them, um, but they are beautiful, and I noticed that every one of them was just a little different. He does this size a lot, but the really nice information I'm excited to share with you is Marcus, because of our show that we did from the Blade Show, because he saw Takafu steel at the blade show marcus has now purchased steel from takafu and he is going to be making these knives with the steel from takafu we know that's going to open up a whole new world because they've got everything from r2 um he's going to be just a different heat treat so we're looking for some definite like fun and after talking to him we're looking at possibly us visiting him and we're able to like see knives being made at his, his, his place. I mean, I don't even know what to call it. Like uh, his workshop, you know, between watching the heat treat, between watching him hammers out. I mean, I'm just super excited to think it's not that far. It's, it's, it's Pendleton's, four, it's, five. okay, four or five hours. I mean, it's, you know, this is what we do for you people, okay? Like we get in the car, we make it happen. We've got some other amazing stuff happening. We're doing some traveling for the show. But anyway, this knife itself, $200, beautiful. It's an American knife maker. It's hopefully not the first that we get on this show. Um, definitely different than any other knives that we had. I'm glad to, to share it with you. We're going to be using this in our kitchen. I'm definitely going to get my wife on this. She always finds a new favorite knife. So we're going to be using this around the kitchen so we can give you updates and we'll have some uh, updates probably following up on Instagram as well as Facebook. So Marcus, I'd like to personally shout out to you. Thank you for sending us the knife. I think it's a treasured addition to the show. We look forward to the advances you make in the new steels. If you guys haven't heard about that steel, 
Um, definitely do your own research on that. So again, let me find the, uh, what did I do? What did I do, Michelle? Right there. there it is. So let's get a focus in on mwsteelworks.com. Marcus Williamson, we salute you for getting into this and doing it. There's so many great American knife makers that we have yet to, uh, to be able to share their work. Um, I'm looking forward to having some other ones on the show as well. I definitely think this was not a dull moment. Something a little bit different for the show. We appreciate it. By the way, you guys might have spied. In case you didn't know, we've got a couple other knives on here you hadn't seen on the show. This is uh, the Takabura 170 uh, R2 SG2 Steel Santoku. Um, if you haven't seen the unboxing of that, we'll put a link in the description. Legendary company. I was glad I was able to compare the two. Beautiful. Gorgeous. And they both have that Magaki kind of a look, that, that one-tone, shiny look. All right. So, as always, thank you for tuning in the show. We wish you the very best. God bless you. This was not a dull moment. Peace out.